If you are suffering from burnout, then you need to watch this video. Today we provide some critical insights on burnout and provide solutions to treat it. We examine the book, The Burnout Challenge, written by psychologists Christiana Maslach and Michael P. Leiter. It is a relevant follow-up to their 1997 book, The Truth About Burnout, which featured their pioneering study on burnout. This book provides the path to creating a better world of work where people can flourish rather than get beaten down. If you keep watching, you will learn the skills needed to prevent and solve burnout. Burnout is becoming a huge problem. 43% of U.S. knowledge workers report being exhausted, according to a survey conducted by Future Forum, in August 2022. The increase was 16% compared to just three months prior. The understanding of this situation and the responses of many organizations are inadequate. The term burnout is frequently used, but what is it? Burnout comes in three forms. Crushing exhaustion, feelings of cynicism and alienation, and a sense of ineffectiveness, as defined by the World Health Organization. Burnout often occurs when individuals experience all three of these feelings simultaneously. Burnout is misunderstood, as the employees suffer from it, but the workplace environment is often the cause. When people suffer from burnout, they tend to turn to coping mechanisms. This can be beneficial in the short term, but long term, it is insufficient. If we want to truly reduce the risk of burnout, we must also emphasize prevention efforts. And this requires a shift in how we view employees in the workplace. Maslach and Leiter believe that a mismatch between an employee and a workplace leads to burnout. They identified the following six ways mismatches occur. The first is work overload. This occurs when the job demands are too high, the hours are too long, and there are inadequate resources to execute them. The authors highlight three ways to reduce work overload having breaks and sufficient rest between tasks, acquiring additional resources to meet demands, and establishing clear boundaries between work and personal life. The second mismatch is lack of control. The authors argue that worker dissatisfaction, when they lack autonomy or flexibility, leads to burnout. People can adapt to any circumstance if they have the ability to engage in decision-making and make choices. Supervisors play a critical role in delegating the proper level of authority to the employees they supervise. The third mismatch is insufficient benefits. Burnout can occur when people feel their hard work is not appropriated or if they are not properly compensated. Rewards might include monetary compensation, appreciation from bosses or coworkers, and intrinsic factors such as autonomy, belonging, and competence. Mismatches are less probable when rewards are considered fair or when the performance of daily work duties is enjoyable. The fourth mismatch is breakdown of community. When asked what would help them prevent burnout the most, a overwhelming majority of respondents cited the need for colleagues to whom they can turn to, for guidance or assistance when needed. The authors say that firms attempting to reduce burnout begin by eliminating workplace incivility disrespectful behavior has no advantages in the workplace. In addition to reducing the danger of burnout, increasing civility and respect in working cultures provides actual benefits. The fifth mismatch is absence of fairness. When absence of fair condition exists, it can lead to burnout. This happens when decisions are perceived as unjust, people are not treated with respect, and many processes and outcomes are biased and discriminating. Additionally, when employee awards are selected based on favoritism or other arbitrary criteria, causing significant staff discontent. The last mismatch is value conflicts. The majority of employees perform their best work when they believe in what they're doing and when their everyday work nurtures their integrity, pride, and self-respect. When individuals perceive that their organization's ideals conflict with their own, they are more susceptible to burnout. So how do you prevent and treat burnout? The authors outline ways to prevent and reduce burnout. From an employee's perspective, the burnout challenge contains a brief questionnaire that you can use to evaluate your personal relationship with work. From an organization's perspective, the most effective strategy to reduce employee burnout is to follow these three simple steps. 1. Develop organizational processes that enable workers to do their duties efficiently. Secondly, collaborating with all employees. Thirdly, adapting to the local culture and culture of the industry. 
this book provides the path to creating a better world of work where people can flourish rather than get beaten down. Remember that there are six mismatches that cause burnout. Businesses and employees should avoid these to prevent burnout. Thank you so much for watching our video, click the like button now to support our channel and click subscribe if you want to get notified each time we post a new summary.